I'm Drew Stevenson, and this is a lecture about the case Pacific Gas, an electric company versus the Federal Power Commission, a DC Circuit Court of Appeals case from 1974. This is for two of my courses, administrative law, in the casebook I use, this is an important note case that I would like my students to pay attention to. And in statutory interpretation and regulation, it's actually one of the main cases in the casebook that we use. And here we're talking about the procedures under the Administrative Procedure Act for agencies to promulgate rules through a public comment period or public notice and comment. And the exception for what the APA calls general statements of policy. So our main takeaway here is that general statements of policy don't establish a binding norm. It's sort of like the force of law. And um, therefore, a, a general statement of policy is not finally determinative of issues or rights to which it is addressed. And that's going to be the test that the court is kind of working with. Now, let's talk about the facts. It's a little complicated here. The um, Natural Gas Act gave the Federal Power Commission, which has since then been replaced by the um, Energy Regulatory Commission or FERC. Um, but the, the Power Commission had authority to set just and reasonable rates under its statute for natural gas pipelines. And then the agency would regulate rates. Uh, the commission also had authority over how natural gas pipelines respond to periodic shortages of natural gas. During shortages, pipeline companies needed to um, curtail gas deliveries to some customers. So during shortages, as we said, they, the pipeline companies would then have to decide how they were going to curtail their gas supplies. And before the commission issued what's called Order 467, which is our, what we're talking about in this case in 1973, these were basically de decided on a case-by-case -case basis. The, the pipeline company would uh, decide that they're going to cut off certain customers, and then um, the power commission would decide whether or not that was legitimate or they could do that. Um, some customers, of course, um, were uh, would object to their gas being cut off temporarily, even during a regional or nationwide shortage. And the Power Commission would then evaluate after the fact whether that pipeline company's curtailment decisions uh, were just and reasonable. And so, um, the, uh, in 1971, the FPC tried to address these issues by issuing an order uh, um, called 431, which directed pipeline companies to file their curtailment plans with the Federal Power Commission um, in advance. And, but Order 431 didn't give any guidance about which curtailment plans they would probably approve or deem just and reasonable. And so the pipeline submitted uh, proposals that were all over the place, that uh, a wide range of plans that had very different priorities. So in 19, uh, later, the, um, the FPC issued, without doing notice and comment, Order uh, 467, and um, which stated that the general policy would be that in the event of a shortage, including a provision that each pipeline should prioritize to um, delivery to residential and small volume consumers. In other words, they didn't want the pipelines to cut off um, people's homes, and, but they were more likely to cut it off to an industry, that, um, a single company. And if you think about it, this kind of makes sense. First of all, we don't want people freezing to death in their homes in the middle of winter because they don't have gas or they can't cook on their gas stove and so forth. Um, but uh, a factory uh, it could, it could just close down for a while and send the workers home um, uh, until the shortage is over or find an alternate uh, energy source. And in addition, the factory uses a lot of the gas all at once. And so maybe if we cut off a few of these sort of um, huge consumers or gas hogs, then we could solve the shortage sooner. That's the sort of thinking here. The order also provided that customers with firm contract service should be given priority over customers with interruptible service. So this was all a matter of there were different kind of, kinds of contracts and they would be priced accordingly, um, where either you were kind of guaranteed a price or the, you paid a lower price for your gas, but the gas company contractually had the right to um, 
cut it off for, uh, and have it be interruptible. Um, in an extreme case, when a pipeline had to curtail gas, even to customers with firm contract service, it would do bar large volume users uh, first. Um, so 460, order 467 did allow for some administrative exceptions. In other words, you could plead that you had a special case and the, um, uh, the commission could make an, a special exception for an individual uh, petitioner uh, pipeline. And so the FPC would permit parties who believe they face um, unusual circumstances to file a petition for relief. And if there were some extraordinary circumstances that might justify departures from these stated priorities. Now, natural gas customers who were low priority under Order 467 were understandably unhappy about this. And that includes Pacific Gas and Electric Company. So they're getting their gas, uh, PG um, and E is getting their gas from the pipeline companies. And among other things, PG&E objected that Order 467 was really a substantive rule or a regulation and therefore should have gone through the um, Section 553 notice and comment process. Um, arguably, the commission did adopt something that resembles a typical legal rule or regulation, but the agency didn't use notice and comment rulemaking. And so the agency's action is legitimate only if it fits under one of those exceptions under 553-B-A. Um, and so the court held that the commission's order was a general statement of policy. The, 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 in other words, the agency wins here and therefore is exempt from the uh, public comment and waiting period uh, requirements of the Administrative Procedure Act. And the other implication is that there's no judicial review um, according to the enabling statute for um, Order 467. And I pulled out a, um, a quote from the opinion that I wanted to highlight for you. As a general statement of policy, the order merely announces the tentative curtailment uh, policy, which the commission considers to be just and reasonable. Um, non-discriminatory and non-preferential. It's the policy which the commission hopes to apply in future proceedings, but there is no assurance that this specific policy will be imposed on all pipelines and their customers. Thus, petitioners um, will not suffer undue hardship if judicial review um, is, uh, is basically not going to be, uh, is denied or is not available. Now, um, Courts need meaningful and effective ways to distinguish these legislative rules or what we normally call a regulation from interpretive rules or general statements of policy. Otherwise, agencies would have little incentive to go through the increasingly onerous notice and comment requirements. Um, they could just uh, save a step when they wanna make a rule and just call it an interpretive rule or a general statement of policy. Um, on the other hand, um, the, um, the, the FPC's position is that this is not a substantive rule, but rather a general statement of policy, or for short, what we call policy statements or guidance documents. And that as such, it's exempt uh, from these requirements. So the, now the gas company had argued that 467 was a substantive rule because it was a declaration by the commission that certain conduct is lawful or unlawful, essentially. And therefore it applies broadly and uh, prospectively. So this should start to sound like more legislative action than adjudicative action or something like that by the agency. And if it is indeed a substantive rule, then it would be invalid under uh, because 467 was issued without compliance to the notice and comment rulemaking procedures under section 553. Um, at the same time, please note that the APA does not define interpretive rules or general statements of policy. And the legislative history on this point is very sketchy and inconclusive. We're not sure what Congress meant by these words. And as a result, courts have to devise functional tests in the absence of a congressional guidance. And so lower court opinions yield a confusing array of approaches. Probably the most common is the force of law approach in modern times, but that also is applied inconsistently. Um, and the Supreme Court really hasn't settled this issue, even though we've had some of these cases go to the Supreme Court. Now, where does this leave us? Well, as I mentioned, the force of law test 
as articulated and applied in this case, specific gas and electric is probably the most frequently cited or used test for distinguishing rules from policy statements. But the force of law test is not consistently applied and even the meaning of force of law um, itself uh, is not always constant or consistent across the cases. And that concludes um, our lecture about, uh, about this uh, case regarding the Federal Power Commission.